Okay, so once again, uh, good afternoon. Uh, whether my voice is audible? Anyone please reply once again. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, in the last lecture, we have started uh, the last type of the chapter number four that is related to the composite shaft. And in the uh, yesterday's lecture, we have uh, discussed what is meant by the composite shaft and what is the basic definition of the shaft connected in the series. So once again, I will uh, repeat few things. What is meant by the composite shaft that we have discussed in the chapter number one also. What is meant by the composite material? What is that? If more than one materials are added together and from that one structure is formed, then that structure is called as a composite structure. Okay. So similarly, in case of a sharp structure also, here yesterday I have explained, this is the sharp number one, this is the sharp number two, and this is the sharp number three. So sharp number one is made by the aluminum, sharp number two is made by the steel, and the sharp number three is made by the brass material. And all the three shafts are connected to the each other. Therefore, this total structure is called as a composite structure because aluminum is connected to the steel, steel is connected to the brass, all are in contact with each other. Therefore, this is called as a composite shaft. And in addition to that, this structure is also called as a shaft connected in series. Why? Because the definition we are having that is if the shaft of different materials are connected to the each other along the length, this line is very important. The shaft of different materials are connected to each other along the length that is called as a shaft connected in series. And if you see the actual figure, this is the shaft number one having length L1. Once the shaft one is finished, then immediately the steel shaft is connected to the this aluminum shaft having length L2. Then this brass shaft is also connected to the steel shaft having length L3. That means whatever the connection is taking place, that connection is taking place perfectly in horizontal direction means the shafts are connected to each other along the length L. Therefore, this structure is called as a shaft connected in series. And now here, this particular composite shaft is subjected to the T amount of torque which is applied at free end. Okay, and one end is fixed. This is the left side which is fixed. And whatever the right side is there, at this particular right side, I am applying the T amount of torque. And due to this particular torque, some amount of twisting is taking place in this particular total shaft. And that twisting means it is called as a theta. Or it is also called as a twisting moment. And that theta value we have to calculate. And for that purpose, we have to require two conditions. So whatever the total torque is there, whatever the total torque is there, that total torque is equal to capital T is equal to T1 is equal to T2 is equal to T3. Because as the torque is applied at the free end, very hard torque free end applies as a cell, the ripple, this brass shaft is connected to the steel, steel is connected to the aluminum. Therefore, same torque we have to consider for the brass, steel and aluminum. Therefore, total torque is equal to T1 is equal to T2 is equal to T3. But due to this particular T amount of torque, whatever the twisting is taking place in all the three shafts, it will not remain constant. Maximum twisting is taking place at free end. Some amount of less twisting is taking place at the middle shaft and very negligible twisting is taking place at the fixed side because at this particular side, the shaft is fixed. And when the shaft is fixed, the twisting chances are Therefore, the maximum twisting is taking place at the free end, somewhat less in steel shaft, and very less amount of twisting is taking place in the aluminum, means I can say that the twisting is not uniform in this particular shaft. And that twisting we have to calculate. That means total angle of twist that is theta is equal to theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3. And theta formula I have given yesterday. T into L divided by G into J of section 1 plus T into L divided by G into J of section number 2 plus T into L divided by G into J of section 3. So like that, we have to calculate the total angle of twist. And this concept is somewhat similar to the linear deformation. Just upon delta L, Kartana, total deformation is equal to delta L1 plus delta L2 plus delta L3. Asakarto, similarly, here we are calculating the theta. But what is the difference? This delta L represents the linear deformation, and this theta represents the angular deformation. 
and in this linear deformation you are having the delta l formula that is pl upon ae and in this particular formula this p represents external force which plays very very important role during delta l calculation similarly during this theta calculation this torque t torque it plays very very important role during the theta calculation and these are the two conditions that is total torque is equal to t1 is equal to t2 is equal to t3 and total theta is equal to theta1 plus theta2 plus theta3 so by using these two conditions we have to solve one sample problem and based on this i hope in the yesterday lecture you have taken this particular two conditions that is total torque is equal to t1 is equal to t2 is equal to t3 and total angle of twist that is theta is equal to theta1 plus theta2 plus theta3 and theta is a formula kya asto ani tu kasha varun ala tar t upon j is equal to g theta by l by rearranging the terms theta is equal to t into l divided by g into j so these are the two conditions which we have to use i hope everyone has taken this list of the formulas in your notebook yesterday have you taken yes sir okay now we'll solve one sample problem based on this and then we will stop okay actually this is not part of your syllabus but some mcq questions they are asking in the examination based on this particular concept therefore purposefully uh, uh, we are taking this particular part because it is important for your mcq examination problem is not asking but how to solve the problem that's why one sample problem we are taking see a compound shaft compound shaft means it is also called as a composite compound shaft means it is also called as a composite shaft is composed of 1 meter length of solid copper of 150 mm diameter 1 meter length the first shaft is solid in cross section their material is copper and that copper shaft is having length 1 meter and diameter 150 mm okay then this copper shaft is joined to 2 meter length of solid steel shaft of 200 mm diameter mujhe solid copper shaft ek ahe je ji length 1 meter ahe je ji diameter 150 mm ahe tya shaft la dusra solid steel shaft connect kelela ahe je ji length 2 meter ahe ani diameter 200 mm ahe okay a torque of 26 kilo newton meter a torque of 26 kilo newton meter is applied at the end of the shaft in opposite direction now here this shaft is not fixed at one end and another end is free both sides are free if both sides are free then we have to apply the torque at left side also as well as we have to apply the torque at right side also and both are in opposite direction जर तुम शाफ्ट एक बाजूला फिक्स असेल आणि दुसऱ्या बाजूला फ्री असेल तर त्या ठिकाणी फ्री साईडलाच आपल्याला फक्त काय करावं लागतो टॉर्क अप्लाय करावं लागतो पण दुसरी साईड फिक्स असल्यामुळं आणि फ्री एंड साईडला आपण टॉर्क अप्लाय केल्यामुळं इमिडिएटली दॅट शाफ्ट इज अंडर द ट्विस्टिंग मुवमेंट बट इफ द शाफ्ट इज फ्री फ्रॉम बोथ साईड दोन्ही बाजूला जर तो फ्री असेल ऍट दॅट टाइम वी हॅव टू अप्लाय टॉर्क ऍट लेफ्ट साईड ऍज वेल ऍज ऍट राईट साईड बट बोथ आर इन opposite direction means equal in magnitude opposite in nature म्हणजे 26 kN meter हा लेफ्ट साइड ला पण असणार आहे जर तो anti clockwise मध्ये असेल तर राईट साइड ला पण 26 kN meter असणार आहे बट इट इज इन क्लॉकवाइज डायरेक्शन व्हाय डायरेक्शन्स आर ऑपोजिट बिकॉज वी हैव टू कंसीडर दिस शाफ्ट अंडर टॉर्शन शाफ्ट चा ट्विस्टिंग मोमेंट कधी होणार आहे जर तो टॉर्क ऑपोजिट डायरेक्शन मध्ये अप्लाई केला तरच दैट शाफ्ट इज अंडर टॉर्शन जर दोन्ही टॉर्क हे एकाच डायरेक्शन मध्ये असतील देर इज नो एनी पॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ ट्विस्टिंग मुवमेंट दॅट्स वाय दिस टॉर्क ऑफ ट्वेंटी सिक्स किलो न्यूटन मीटर इज अप्लाइड इन अपोजिट डायरेक्शन देन फाइंड द मॅक्सिम शिअर स्ट्रेस इन इच मटेरियल म्हणजे कॉपर मधला सेपरेट शिअर स्ट्रेस फाइंड आउट करायचा आहे स्टील मधला सेपरेट शिअर स्ट्रेस फाइंड आउट करायचा आहे अँड इन ऍडिशन टू दॅट द टोटल अँगल ऑफ ट्विस्ट ऑफ एंटायर शाफ्ट दॅट इज टोटल थिटा व्हॅल्यू वी हॅव टू कॅल्क्युलेट then take g g for the copper 30 giga newton per meter square and g for the steel 85 newton per giga newton per meter square so these are the parameters given so first of all we have to draw the figure as per the statement so first i will draw the steel shaft 
as they have mentioned in the statement this is the copper this is the copper shaft having length 1 meter their diameter phi is equal to 150 mm then another shaft is connected to the copper okay this is the steel shaft both are in solid section their diameter is 2 meter sorry their length is 2 meter and their diameter is 200 mm and both are subjected to the same amount of torque that is 26 kilo newton meter and at this side also this is 26 kilo newton so this is the shaft as the copper and the steel are connected to the each other that is two shaft of different materials are connected to the each other therefore this particular shaft is called as a composite shaft and both are subjected to the 26 kilo newton meter torque in opposite direction okay and we have to calculate the total angle of twist now twist is not uniform twist is not uniform and that total angle of twist we have to calculate so first of all we will write all the given parameter first see draw the figure accordingly in your notebook so given first length of copper is equal to 1 meter is equal to 1000 mm diameter of copper 150 mm length of steel 2 meter is equal to 2000 mm diameter of steel 200 mm g of copper is given how much 30 30 giga newton per meter square means it is 1 giga pascal that is 30 into 10 raised to 3 newton per mm square similarly g for the steel it is also given 85 85 giga newton per meter square is equal to 85 into 10 raised to 3 newton per mm square and what we have to calculate shear stresses that is tau of copper we have to calculate tau of steel we have to calculate and total angle of twist that is theta also we have to calculate okay so these are the parameters we have to calculate now the first first parameter will calculate sorry torque value they have also given the torque value so t is equal to 26 kilo newton meter ma kilo newton cha pan newton madhe karav lagel meter cha pan mm madhe karav lagel manje 10 raised to 3 into 10 raised to 3 that is 26 into 10 raised to 6 newton mm so these are all the given parameters so one by one we will calculate all the parameters so the first that is tau of copper second tau of steel now we have to calculate the shear stresses induced in the copper material and the shear stress induced in the steel material so which formula we have to use for your further calculation which formula we have to use for our further calculation in the form of shear stress and in the form of torque which formula we have to use t upon j is equal to tau upon r correct t upon j is equal to tau upon r this formula we have to use this is the torque this is the j as a polar moment of inertia tau is the shear stress and this r represents the radius of the shaft if the same i will write in the form of copper t is the common t is equal to j pi by 32 into d raised to 4 is equal to tau of copper divided by r of copper and only we have to keep the value that is 26 into 10 raised to 6 divided by j means pi by 32 into d raised to 4 means 150 raised to 4 is equal to tau of copper we have to calculate and r of copper means 
150 divided by 2 why because r of copper is equal to d of copper divided by 2 and simply 26 into 10 raised to 6 this 32 i will take at the top side divided by pi into 150 raised to 4 into tau of copper divided by 75 and tell me the value of tau of copper. Similarly, how much? 39 point? 23. Newton per mm square. Please check your calculation. Those who are calculating, send your answers in the chat box. Simple formula we have to use. That is our torsion formula. T upon J is equal to tau upon R. J theta by L. This term is not important here because theta value is not mentioned because that theta value we have to calculate. But we are having one formula that is T upon J is equal to tau upon R. What is your answer? Please send your answers in the chat box. Then tau of steel. We are having one formula once again that is T upon J of steel is equal to tau of steel divided by R of steel. Okay. Then again torque is common. 26 into 10 raised to 6 divided by pi by 32 into d raised to 4 is equal to tau of steel divided by R of steel means 200 divided by 2. Why it is like that? Because R of steel is equal to D of steel divided by 2. So now put the values 26 into 10 raised to 6 into 32 I will take at the top side divided by pi into 200 raised to 4 is equal to tau of steel divided by 100 Therefore, tau of steel is equal to. Sixteen point fifty five Newton per mm square. We check sixteen point sixteen point fifty five Newton per mm square. Yes, thirty nine point twenty three Newton per mm square. This is the tau of copper. This is the tau of copper that is shear stress induced in the copper material separate stresses we are calculating and then calculate the tau of steel same formula we have to use but we have to replace the term from copper to steel same formula we have written for copper material same formula we have written for the steel material and we have put the value of diameters only and further calculation is same that is 16.55 newton per mm square and the steel material stress is minimum as compared to the copper in the steel material the stress is minimum it is only 16.55 why because diameter is high means area is maximum therefore here our conditions are satisfying stress is minimum where area is maximum and stress is maximum where area is minimum that is 16.55 Newton per mm square. I am getting the answers only from the girl students. What about others? What about others, boy students? Don't attend the lectures only for attendance purpose. Do the calculations and send your answers in the chat box. Find both the values tau of copper and the tau of steel. In steel material, stress is minimum because their area is maximum. And steel is a diameter 200, ahe, copper is a diameter 150. Ahe. Therefore, in the steel material, stress is minimum because their area is maximum. So likewise, this is the very simple calculation. We have solved such types of problems in the type number one also. We have solved this particular problem in the type number one also. Yes, 16.55 Newton per mm square. 
this is the stress in the steel material and 39.23 newton per mm square this is the stress in the copper material and now we have to calculate the third parameter very important that is total angle of twist total angle of twist that is theta so theta is equal to theta 1 plus theta 2 why theta 1 plus theta 2 because only two materials are there theta 1 is for the copper material and theta 2 is for the steel material we are having the formula theta that is t or is equal to theta 1 means theta of theta of copper plus theta of steel so t into l divided by g into j of copper material plus plus t into l divided by g into j of steel material okay now put the values so theta is equal to t is common that is 26 into 10 raised to 6 into length is given 1 meter converted in mm that is 1000 divided by g 13 into 10 raised to 3 into j j means pi by 32 into 150 raised to 4 this is for the copper material plus steel material 26 into 10 raised to 6 into length 2000 into length 2000 divided by g that is 85 into 10 raised to 3 into pi by 32 into 200 raised to 4 bracket complete now tell me the separate calculation of this term that is t into l divided by g into j of copper what is the total value 0. of this 0.01 for copper 0.0174 plus for the steel 3.89 into 3.89 to 10 raised minus 3 correct 3.89 into 10 raised to minus 3. 3 and if you make the addition of this total theta is equal to how much 0.02129 0.02129 this is the value in radian this value you will get in radian because all the parameters are present in newton all the parameters are present in newton per mm square all the parameters are present in mm as per the respective parameters therefore whatever the theta value initially you will get that will be in radian so tell me your answers those who have calculated either you can do the simultaneous calculation if you are able to calculate otherwise do the separate calculation for the copper term do the separate calculation for the steel and then at the end you have to make the addition and then you will get the answer that is 0.02129 or some another answers that is 0.02089 0.0213 like that variations will be there because uh, some sometimes you are making the direct calculation sometimes you are doing the separate calculation then making the additions so no problem but it should be 0.021 it is near about that that value will be in radian this value will be in radian so now i have to convert this particular value in a degree 
I have to convert this particular value in degree. So what I have to do? That is 0 0.0129. If I have to convert radian to degree, what I have to do? Multiply by? 180 by pi. 180 by pi. Jairus, degree and degrees radian convert to the degree term pi by 180 multiply. Kutu. For example, if it is given 2 degree, so 2 into pi by 180, that is converted from degree to radian. Now we have to convert from radian to degree. So exactly opposite that is multiply by 180 by pi. Therefore, theta is equal to what will be the answer by multiplying 180 1. by 1.22 1.21 1.21 or approximately 1.22 degree this is the final answer and this theta represents total angle of twist this theta represents total angle of twist so separate twisting we have calculated for the copper, separate twisting we have calculated for the steel, but we have to calculate total angle of twist of entire shaft. Therefore, we have to make the addition. You will get the first answer in radian. Then to this particular radian term, we have to multiply by 180 by pi, and then you will get the answer in degree that is equal to 1.21 degree or 1.22 degree. So this will be the total angle of twist. Just a chapter number one made upon delta L1 separately find out Kala, then the delta L2 separately find out Kala, delta L3 separately find out Kala and at the end we have made addition of delta L1 plus delta L2 plus delta L3 and this total delta L represents the total deformation of bar. But here there is no any bar. Here the shaft is there. And for the shaft, always we have to calculate the angular deformation. Delta L is the linear deformation. Theta is the angular deformation, which is also called as a angular twist. And this theta value we have to calculate by using this particular procedure. By putting the torque same for both the shafts, that is total torque is equal to T of steel is equal to T of copper. And second condition is theta is equal to theta is equal to theta 1 plus theta 2. So like that we have to follow the procedure. So this is one sample problem which we have taken based on the total angle of twist calculation. So those who have not calculated Go for the calculation. Same process we have to follow, which we have followed in the chapter number one. That is total deformation calculation. Only formula is different, concept is different. Otherwise, procedure is same. Okay, so this is related to the composite shaft. And if the shafts are connected in series, then how to calculate the total angle of twist? Or which are the two conditions? That we have to keep in mind because based on this particular concept that is composite shaft and the shafts connected in series uh, some mcq patients are asking in the examination therefore purposefully we have taken this particular part okay have understood this particular procedure everyone how to yes. calculate the total angle of twist here, based on this particular type number three, you have to give maximum focus on the concept because numericals are not asking in the examination. But how to calculate exact theta for that purpose, we have taken this particular one numerical for your more understanding. Okay, everyone have understood anybody's having any problem? Yes, anybody, any problem? Okay, no. Okay, so uh, this will be the type number three that is composite shafts and the shafts connected in series. And this will be the last point. Already we have discussed this particular point uh, at the start only, uh, that is the strength of solid shaft and the strength of hollow shaft. So same things, once again, I'm going to explain here and then we will stop. Why hollow shaft is more preferable than the solid shaft? 
so many applications are there in some of the application uh, we can use only solid shaft in some of the applications we can use only hollow shaft as per the requirement we are using but if we make the comparison between solid and the hollow the hollow shaft is more preferable in the many application because some reasons behind it that reasons we are going to discuss here okay so solid shaft means there is only one diameter solid shaft means there is only one diameter and in case of a solid shaft the torque is maximum at the outer periphery for example here i will draw the solid shaft this is the solid shaft and this is the hollow this is the solid and this is the hollow so in case of a solid shaft it is having only one diameter that is outer diameter and to this particular outer diameter bar or this particular outer periphery the torque is maximum as well as the stress is also maximum due to this particular outer periphery the torque is always maximum and the stress is always maximum but if we compare this particular solid shaft with this particular hollow shaft in case of a hollow shaft their central portion is totally hollow their central portion is totally hollow and if it is hollow in cross section there is no any material present therefore at the center of the hollow shaft whatever the shear stress is induced it is totally equal to zero but in case of a solid shaft portion is not hollow solid shaft cha center la pan tumcha kay asnar hai material is present therefore some amount of stress is also induced at the center portion and in addition to hollow shaft at the hollow shaft as the section is totally hollow we can use this particular hollow portion for some another application also means one more shaft we can insert in this particular hollow portion and that can be useful for some another application mhanje ha hollow shaft cha central portion hollow aslyamule tyachyamadhe apan dusra shaft insert karun pan that can be used for your next application but it will not be possible in case of a solid shaft <coughs> because their central portion is not hollow so we cannot use their central portion for another applications so these are the reasons where these are the two reasons that's why the hollow shaft is more preferable than solid shaft <coughs> so that point already we have discussed whenever we are discussing the strength of the solid shaft and the strength of hollow shaft but once again i want to explain this particular point once again because sometimes some mcq question is also there based on this particular point why hollow shaft is more preferable than the solid shaft so four reasons are given out of that four reasons we have to select correct one for your final answer so this is related to the basic concept why hollow shaft is preferable than the solid shaft and uh, with this particular last point we have finished this chapter number 4 okay so the torsion of the circular shaft in that we have started with the first point that is what is meant by the torsion how the shaft is subjected to the twisting moment how the shear stress is induced how shear strain is induced then we have discussed all the basic assumptions then we have derived the torsion formula t upon j is equal to tau upon r is equal to g theta by l then we have discussed the three important concept strength of solid shaft and strength of hollow shaft and their important formulas also and then we have started the numericals that is problem number 1 or type number 1 type number 2 and type number 3 type number 1 is mostly related to the shear stress calculation torque trans calculation and the power transmission calculation type number 2 is totally related to the design of shaft where we are calculating the diameters and to calculate that diameters we have to consider the two conditions that is based on the shear stress and based on angle of twist and the third type we have discussed related to the composite shaft and in that we have discussed the shaft connected in series and if it is connected in series how to calculate the total angle of twist so this is related to the chapter number 4 related to the torsion of the circular shaft and with this particular point we have finished this particular chapter number 4 also